Today, we are going to overclock the RTX 3060 8GB from KFA2, but the same method will basically apply to just about any 3060, as long as you have sufficient cooling which will allow you to overclock and keep the temperature down. Now this is a dual 90mm fan GPU, which is a pretty big air cooler that indicates it has potentially some room for overclocking. If you have a single fan RTX 3060, then it gets a bit more difficult to overclock, as temperatures can rise pretty fast, but it still depends on the overclock and the cooler of the GPU. Now undervolting could partially solve this and keep the temperature down, but that's something we'll leave for another video. Having said that, try at your own risk, although destroying a GPU with overclocking is not as easy as it sounds. The first thing to prepare for overclocking is to turn off G-Sync if you have it enabled, and also in the NVIDIA control panel go to power management mode and choose maximum performance as well as high performance in the texture quality. These changes may not affect the results, but I would suggest doing that just in case. Next step is open up MSI Afterburner, run a GPU stress test at stock clocks with the fans set to 80% in order to check temperatures and power draw. As we can see with stock fan curve, we're sitting at 64 degrees and at 80% we're sitting at 52 degrees, with the power draw hovering around 170 watts. We run also a custom 3D Mark synthetic benchmark to check stock performance rating and got 1,958 points. Now we go to Afterburner and move the power and temp limit to max, and set the fan speed to 80% like we did before. I know it will make a lot of noise, but you could try afterward lowering down the fan speed and find the optimal value depending on the temperatures. We leave the benchmark running in a loop and start overclocking the memory clocks by going up 100 MHz each time until it crashes or starts showing artifacts in order to find more or less its limit and then we may adjust with 50 MHz to make it stable. As we see, this KFA2 3068GB seems to run stable at 1600 MHz on the memory, so we can now adjust core clock speeds. As a rule of thumb, any GPU can do plus 100 MHz, so we start from 100 and move 10 MHz up each time until we hit a crash again. We had a crash at 230 MHz, so we went down 10 and set it at 220 MHz for now. Now after finding the stable clocks, we run a stress test first, and then run some games and see if it's stable enough through some games. We did have a crash at those clocks at 1440p, so we eventually went with 210 MHz core and 1550 MHz on the memory, where this KFA2 RTX 3068 GB runs very stable. Now comparing the results, we got 2,292 points running 3D Mark, which is more than 15% performance boost, and in gaming we saw a 5-10% to more performance depending on the title. During our gaming benchmarks, we saw the core and memory clock running indeed at set clock speeds with a power draw of 160 watts, whereas on the stress software we had lower core clock speeds with a 170 watt power draw, and that's due to the fact that the power limit on the RTX 3060 is locked, and we can't go above 170 watts, which is also the rated TDP of the card. So to sum up, the 3068GB from KFA2 handled really well the overclocking, despite the locked power limit, and in my opinion it may be worth overclocking it. I mean, why not? It is free performance boost after all, and we see some really good results here with almost no power consumption increase and very good temperatures. Well, that was it for today. I hope you found this video useful. Hit me up with any questions you may have in the comments section, and as always, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and see you in the next one.